Hey there, Leapin', what you reviewing? It's something neat like an old antique. It's a cheap rip off like a Lego knockoff. A new item that'll knock your socks off. Hey, hey, Leapin', what you reviewing? Hello everybody, Leapin' Leppin' here. How are you guys doing? I'm doing just A-OK. -okay. So, I'm 35 years old and I finally just bought my very first sweep. And uh, I, I, I know there's there's many out there that you can buy. You can buy many from AliExpress. Um, you, you can buy them from Walmart for cheap. But hey, you know what? $50, hey, couldn't do too bad. Uh, it is a Bissell. Or I should say Bissell's. Uh, Knockoff brand of Bissell? Who knows? It's wood. And uh, and it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful wood. Uh, look at this handle. Look how beautiful this is. This hinge. Oh my. That is just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it does have some instructions. And as you can say, it's, it says clean sweep. So let me uh, go ahead and pop this old girl up. And, uh, oh, here we go. Here's the bottom of it. And uh, it's a little bit dirty. Uh, I do plan on cleaning it. Let's see. Ah, here's some important requirements for good sweeping. Yeah, this is a sweeper. This isn't a vacuum cleaner. This is a sweeper. Uh, let's see. Uh, you need to keep your sweeper emptied. Yes, that's very important. Uh, don't let the pan overflow and drop dirt. No, you don't want that. Press on dump levers to open pans. And uh, I believe the dump levers are... Ah, oh, yes, they're on the other side. So I will have to show you that. Uh, let's see. Uh, you need to keep your brushes clean. That is important in every uh, sweep or even vacuum cleaners. You have to keep them clean. Uh, ravelings, hair, etc. Wound around the brush. I have had that experience many times with a turbo brush. Should first be cut, then removed. Yes. If brushes are gummy from floor wax, because, you know, sometimes you, you, you're kind of lazy, you just go over some floor wax, and you're like, eh, you know. Uh, let's see. Cleaners, soap left in the carpet, which some people, you know, hey, some people use that, you know. Uh, use of dustless sweeping preparations on any moist or oily substance. Cleaning with gasoline may help it. Yeah, so, uh, use 87. Uh, it, it, it is actually the, uh, the best gasoline for this. You could use high octane, like 93, but, you know, that might dissolve a little bit too much of your brush, so just use 87. Uh, let's see, uh, of course, you gotta keep it away from the fire till dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, a, a gummy brush will collect dust and lint and become matted and useless, and finally, ruined. Uh, and cannot sweep properly. So, yes, keep your brushes in good order. Which, hey, these are in pretty good order. Pretty good order. Uh, you do need to keep this sweeper oiled. Uh, let's see. Apply one drop of oil once a month to the hubs. Which are, you know, here. These are your hubs. And, uh, let's see. Uh, wheels? Uh, I, it, something's missing there. Sliding member and middle end of bar. Uh, on standard model. And then, and the wheels. So, let's see. Oh, here's some instructions for good sweeping. Using more or less or no pressure on the handle, adjust the sweeper to different kinds of carpet. Yeah, this is pretty neat. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, what you do, uh, if you see here, if I push down on that, see that adjust makes this go deeper or lower. Which, I, I, I'll show you here a little bit better. Um, let's see. Uh, sweeper to different kinds of carpet. This broom action, pretty neat. Heavy or padded carpets require little to no pressure, which is excellent. Uh, never press on handle enough to make the sweeper push hard. You don't want to do that. You, you might, you know, you, you might, you might break it. To do good sweeping and do it easier, avoid too much pressure. Yeah, it, it won't pick up because it won't move. Uh, read and save the complete direction sheet accompanying the sweeper, which would be, you know, smart. Uh, oh, there's there's a warning here. Beware of peddling sweeper repairmen. Yeah, they're out there, folks. You, you gotta watch these repairmen, man. Yeah, they're, they're everywhere. Uh, them and Porsche pirates. 
we have no servicemen out. So all cleaning to be represent rep, to represent us are frauds. That's very true. You know, you, you can never get enough fraudsters out there, huh? Who generally do the sweeper little to no good, if no act, if not actual harm in overcharge. Yeah, you don't want repair. You know, it's, it's just some yahoo coming in repairing your sweeper. Uh, in fact, if you need repairs, uh, see your dealer or write us name of nearest authorized repair dealer for direct service. And this is of course from Bissell Carpet Sweeper Company, Grand Rapids, Michigan, USA. So the way this works is pretty neat. You gotta be careful on this little girl, but hey, she works. So, you see, this right here, all right, uh, that's your standard height. I'm going to go down here to where the brushes are. See how the brushes move back and forth? All right. So, if I push down, the brushes go lower, and they start sweeping. See that? That's your broom action on this little bissel. And uh, that's that's pretty neat. You know, hey, technology these days, man, uh, it, 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 it is so amazing. Um, oh, here, uh, this is how you empty your pan right here. You just push that down, and boop, pan pops out. You can dump all your trash that you uh, picked up from sweeping. So, yeah, pretty neat, pretty neat. Uh, let's see here. Uh, is there any other interesting thing on here? Uh, oh, yeah. Right here, uh, the date, 308M, uh, 11-30-27. That's 1927, folks. Not 2027. 1927. This sweeper is dang near 100 years old. And it works flawlessly. Yes, the hubs are going to have to be oiled. Okay. If you can see, that's how they work. This uh, this brush deal here is wood. Those are genuine horsehair. Let's see what else. Uh, I I do believe that these are meant to be um, oiled monthly. The springing action is pretty interesting. Uh, let me put this down gently. So, the springing action, I believe is this right here. Or maybe not. But anyway, uh, these wheels go up and down. This is, I want to say it's probably steel. Or maybe even cast iron. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if these wheels are cast iron. But that paint on there, <laughs> that paint is probably lead. In fact, I'm 99.95% .95 sure it's lead. Um, I need to get a lead test kit just to make sure. Um, and it, it works flawlessly. It will work flawlessly. Uh, in fact, I'll do a demonstration here shortly. Um... Let's see, there's some nails that are trying to pop out. I'll go ahead and try to hammer those back in gently. There's one, oh, here it is, right here. There's the major one right there. That one's popping out pretty good. Um, but yeah, so back in the early 20s, 1920s, this was Bissell's. So it wasn't as established as it is now as a company. You know, uh, Bissell's was like, you know, hey, Mr. Bissell's, you know, clean sweep. And this was before vacuum technology was even around. Hey, guys, uh, post-edit here. Um, the first vacuum cleaner was invented in the early 1900s, 1901, around there. Uh, I did bring up some, a uh, little bit more information on Bissell. Uh, let's see. Uh, Melville Bissell uh, developed an early carpet sweeping machine and aid, or, or to aid in cleaning in the uh, crockery shop he and his wife Anna owned and operated. The device was patented as a Bissell carpet sweeper in 1876, so the clean sweep 
I, I'm not sure if the clean sleep name was actually around in 1876, but it had, had been around since 1876 at that point. So you're looking at uh, almost 50 years at that point. In 1883, Bissell built the company's first manufacturing plant in Grand Rapids. Okay, so maybe less than uh, 50, so 40 years at that point. By the 1890s, the company had international presence, which was pretty impressive, um, and was producing a thousand sweepers per day. That that is actually uh, very impressive, very impressive, uh, especially back in the 1890s. Uh, Melville Bissell died in 1889, and his wife Anna took over as leader of the company. She served as a company president from 1889 to 1919 and chairman over the board. From 1919 to 1934. So that's 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 pretty it's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Anna, she had a long, long life. It, it it's it's overall pretty dang neat. I did find a newspaper clipping. Um, here it is. Yeah, so these were actually rubber tired at one time. Um, that rubber has fallen off, as you can tell. Um, this retailed, as you can see in that newspaper clipping, for $4.95, which today would be around $90. So, it was not a cheap thing. Uh, let me show you the handle. So, this is the handle here. Beautiful. A little bit warped, but pretty sure that's just age. Look at the tigering on that. Look at the... That's beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? That is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, hang on. Absolutely gorgeous. I love that tiger striping. The uh, This whole thing is made out of mahogany i believe steel maybe possibly cast iron uh, oh here's something really neat see this uh, end on this so that is your standard uh, screw end that goes in here i have uh back at the bay there at work i have these type of screw ends for my brushes and um, for my, um, uh, cloths to, uh, clean cars with. So, the outside, that is. So, yeah, that, even in, you know, this thing's almost 100 years old. And they're still using this type of screw technology today, which just tells you just how, how, um, what's the word? How, uh robust it is so yeah um I, I picked this up for fifty dollars which i thought was an absolute steal uh the paint on there as i said i am 99.95 percent sure that is uh lead um especially from being 1927 i do plan on oiling this up i do plan on cleaning it but not heavily clean it because antiques you're not really supposed to heavily clean antiques because it adds value um but there again i'm going to be using this from time to time as an actual clean sweep so i mean it lasted over 100 years it'll last another 100 i'm fairly sure of it um but if you watch my videos and if you work at bissell or anything like that. Um, it's, it, I, I just wonder if you could get maybe possibly in the future uh, some new brushes, um, j just in case. Uh, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not counting on it, but uh, it would be, it would be kind of neat. So, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you this. Uh, let me get ready for a little demonstration here. Well, dang it, dropped some Legos. Ah, don't you just hate that? Itty bitty Legos. 
Uh, well, but hey, let's see if this uh, Bissell sweeper will uh, do the work here. So different carpets take different pressure. So let's put a little bit of pressure on it. Have it sweep. Oh, pick that one up. Let's see if I can do this. Push down a little bit. Oh, look at that. There it goes. That one might be a little bit too flat. Yep, just push it to the side. What we got over here? Do we have another Lego? We do. Look at that, it's a little brown one. Let's put a little bit of pressure on it. Boom! Picked it right up. So, yeah, even after 100 some, or close to 100 years, it still works like a little dandy. Pretty neat. Oh, there's one right there. See it? Let's get it. All right. Go, 97 year old. Go. Got it. So, it'll pick up Legos. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Pick up things that never existed when it was new. And uh, let me show you how the uh, dumping action works. Okay, I think I got it here. It's going to look a little weird, and I do apologize. But in order to empty this, just push this, and that opens up these pans, which are really dirty. And uh, in order to close it, put it back on the ground, pops right back up. So, yeah. There you go. This has been Leapin' Leppin'. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, make sure to ring that bell to get notifications for whenever I upload a new video. This is Leapin' Leppin'. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Have a good day.